This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Have you ever wanted to get round to reading a book but just don't have the time? Blinkist is the perfect app for you. Blinkist condenses non-fiction books into a 15 minute selection of highlights where you can learn all the important bits, either from reading the content yourself or listening to it like a podcast. Blinkist saves time, money and allows users to learn new things in various fields such as self-improvement and relationships. I am currently listening to The Fate of Rome by Kyle Harper and The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson, both of which are fascinating reads. All titles can be accessed offline and full-length audiobooks have recently been added to the collection. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash Dark Curiosities are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. With your 7 day free trial, you can cancel at any time. Thank you once again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Known as the gateway to the southwest of Florida, Fort Myers is a popular tourist destination known for its nature, its beaches and its historical estates. Though it is deemed one of the safest cities in the state, Fort Myers still suffers its fair share of crime, just as any other city does. On the 23rd of March 2007, a land surveyor was around 30 feet into the undergrowth of some dense woodland located around three miles from downtown Fort Myers near the remote Rockville and Arcadia streets when he stumbled upon something sinister. At first, the surveyor believed that they had discovered an animal skull of a deer or a wild boar, but upon closer inspection, they realised that they had discovered two human skulls. The land surveyor immediately contacted Fort Myers police, who promptly arrived on the scene and sealed off the 10-acre thicket. Investigators spent the next few hours sifting through tons of dirt, uncovering the bones of two men, but as daylight faded, it became apparent to investigators that they were dealing with a mass burial site. By the day's end, detectives, with the aid of cadaver dogs and forensic experts, had uncovered something incredibly chilling beneath the forest floor over 1,000 bones belonging to eight individuals, their bodies buried within approximately 50 yards of one another. It was determined that the skeletal remains had been lying in the woods for a number of years, though very little effort had been made to conceal the bodies. The soil where the bones were buried was barely two inches deep, though varying weather conditions such as flooding could have uncovered the bones in the mud. Other than the bones, no further evidence was found at the scene. No clothing or personal items belonging to the victims, nor any sign of a murder weapon such as bullet casings. Unfortunately, due to the likes of animal scavenging and the natural elements, any potential evidence which could indicate who murdered the so-called Fort Myers 8 was long gone. Dental impressions and DNA were taken from each of the eight victims and authorities concluded that they were all male of either Caucasian or Hispanic origins between the ages of 18 and 49. They had most likely been dumped at the site between 1980 and 2000. Notably, seven of the eight men had first-rate dental care, though one of the men was believed to have been homeless or had a rough life based on bone damage and poor dental care. Interestingly, all of the men did appear to have suffered injuries throughout their lifetimes, meaning they likely faced very difficult circumstances at some point, such as living transient lifestyles or away from their families, having to fend for themselves. Initially, rumours circulated in the Fort Myers area that perhaps something strange had been going on at a nearby funeral home. 
In Florida and neighbouring Georgia, there had previously been unethical business occurring at some funeral homes, where families would pay for their loved ones to be cremated. However, the morticians would bury them in remote areas instead, rather than carrying out the cremations. One such home in Georgia did this with over 300 bodies. Police themselves did look into the funeral home theory as a possibility, but to them it seemed far more likely that the wooded area was being used as a serial killer's dumping ground. All of the men were of similar characteristics, which definitely fits a serial killer profile. If a funeral home had been burying bodies in shallow graves, surely women and children would have also been discovered at the site, rather than just men. As the initial investigation progressed, police appealed to the public through the media in the hopes of identifying the Fort Myers 8. Facial reconstructions of the men were published through various news outlets and as a result, a number of families came forward claiming to know at least one of the victims. Following their appeals, investigators were able to identify three of the eight men through DNA. In 2007, they identified one of the men as 21-year-old Eric Kohler from Port Charlotte, who was living with his grandparents at the time. He vanished sometime in 1995 after failing to turn up to a friend's house. Also in 2007, police identified a second man as 38-year-old John C. Blevins of Fort Myers, who wasn't actually reported missing until investigators revealed the skeletons were found in March of 2007. Interestingly, both Kohler and Blevins had had minor run-ins with the law in the past. In early 2008, a third man was identified as 24-year-old drifter Jonathan James John Tihe. Originally from Aurora, Illinois, John became addicted to drugs and had several scrapes with the law, just as Kohler and Blevins had. Tihe spent six months in jail for burglary and served a brief sentence in the Joliet Correctional Centre for destroying property. In the mid-1990s, John moved to Fort Myers to be closer to his mother, however in 1995, he disappeared. The lead suspect in the case was a man named Daniel Conahan Jr., the so-called Hog Trail Killer. He had been arrested and convicted in 1999 of murdering a drifter named Richard Allen Montgomery, though he was linked to over a dozen other murders in Charlotte County and beyond. According to documents held by the courts, Conahan picked up homeless men at Port Charlotte's shelters, a short distance north of Fort Myers. He would take each man, mostly homosexual men, to a remote wooded area where he would sexually assault, mutilate, strangle and even castrate his victims. Even though Conahan lived in Chicago from the late 1970s until 1993, many local investigators continued to view him as a suspect in the Fort Myers case, as he was known to be in the area specifically in the 1990s prior to his arrest in 1996. Stanley Burden, the main witness at Conahan's trial, had been attacked within a mile of the site where the eight skeletons were later found in 2007. Burden had been lured into the woods, tied to a tree, and was subsequently strangled by Daniel Conahan, though he managed to escape. This could of course be purely coincidental, however, surveillance carried out by investigators did reveal that Conahan visited parks in the Fort Myers area on a regular basis, places where drifters would often spend their time. It is believed by investigators that the Fort Myers 8 were all most likely drifters or men who lived transient lifestyles. Whether Conahan was responsible for the murders of the Fort Myers 8 remains unknown, though the timelines do seem to match up. If Conahan had strangled the victims as he had previously done, there would be no evidence of it occurring on the skeletons unless he broke any bones. One problem with Conahan being a potential suspect, however, is that he tended to bury his victims across a number of states, and he was known to pose some of his victims, all of which don't seem to match up to the Fort Myers case. If Conahan was not responsible for this crime, however, who was? 
was there another serial killer operating in the Fort Myers area at the time who could possibly still lurk in the shadows to this day? Due to lack of evidence, nobody has ever been charged with the murders of the Fort Myers Eight. Following the grim find of the eight skeletons in 2007, forensic artist Sharon Long reconstructed the faces of each victim using clay, and sketches were drawn up by Sherry Donask. However, on the 25th of March 2019, 12 years after the Fort Myers 8 were found, authorities released five new and updated facial reconstructions of the remaining unidentified men. These images were made in collaboration with the Fort Myers Police Department and the Miami-Dade Police Department, drawn up by forensic digital artist Samantha Steinberg. Fort Myers investigators hope that these new reconstructions will help in identifying the remaining victims. The initial reconstructions were made using much older methods, and when you compare them to the new images, you can see a massive difference in the accuracy of how these men may have looked in life. Hopefully, the more awareness the case gets, the more likely we will find out the identities of the remaining five Fort Myers John Doe's. Each victim is described as follows. Skull A, aged between 26 and 43, 5 feet 2 to 5 feet 7 inches tall, Hispanic descent. The victim had injuries in both calves and ankles, healed fractures to his right ribs, one to four, and chest. He also had periostitis of his calf bones and his left forearm bone. He also had a defect of the sternum. He may have lived a transient lifestyle. Dental records showed that he had large unfilled cavities, an abscess, old silver fillings and periodontal disease. He had three out of four wisdom teeth. The dental work was consistent with US standards. Skull B, aged between 25 and 35 years of age, could be either of Caucasian or Hispanic descent and stood between 5 feet 6 to 6 feet 2 inches tall. The victim had a healed right clavicle fracture and right fibula fracture, both nasal bones and a herniated vertebrae. His dental records showed that he had no wisdom teeth but he had two older type crowns. He also had orthodontics, including the extraction of four premolars. Skull F, 26 to 43 years old, Caucasian descent, 5 feet 4 to 5 feet 10 inches tall and of a medium build. He had some occupational injuries, possibly from hard labour. Arthritis was also noted in his back and hip, suggesting he may have had ankylosing spondylitis. Fractures to the right ribs 8 to 10 and lumbar vertebrae 4 and 5. There was evidence of good dental care, two composite fillings in his posterior teeth of an older material and he had no silver fillings. All four wisdom teeth were present. Skull G age 18 to 35, Caucasian or Hispanic, 5 feet 8 to 6 feet 3. Described as a tall man with a possible limp which forensic experts believe may help identify him. He also had a fractured right wrist. He had current dental work and silver fillings on his posterior teeth and all four wisdom teeth were present. Skull H age 20 to 35, Caucasian or Hispanic, 5 feet 6 to 5 feet 10 inches tall and of a muscular build. He had current dental work and silver fillings on his posterior teeth and had all four wisdom teeth. Eye colour, hair colour and the weights of all five victims could not be determined due to decomposition and their cause of deaths have never been revealed. The DNA of all five victims are available at the University of North Texas. This case has baffled authorities for over 13 years and still five of the eight men found in that shallow grave in Fort Myers in 2007 remain nameless. How these men met their fate is unknown but we can only hope that someday the truth will come to light. 
Were the Fort Myers 8 victim to an unlawful funeral home or were they victim to an as yet unidentified serial killer? 